Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back, and I wanted to talk about the Real Housewives of New Jersey. So just a quick just a quick update. Um, I was having issues with my old microphone. The microphone was actually brand new, um, but there, when I would go back and listen to uh, my videos, there were parts uh, in the videos, some of my videos, where there would be a static. Um, sometimes it would begin, it would be at the beginning of the video. Sometimes it could be at the end of the video. Sometimes it could be in the middle of the video. Um, hopefully this, I just took this microphone out of the package earlier today, charged it up 100%. Hopefully we don't have those issues with this microphone. Um, however, if you hear a static noise, um, it's not your, it's not your, it's not your iPod. Okay. It's probably more than likely, um, this microphone. Hopefully we're good to go. All right, y'all. So let's go ahead and get into the review. Um, Jennifer, <laughs> Jennifer meets up with her family and long story short, she's telling them what has happened, what transpired between her and Danielle. Um, Jennifer used to be my girl, like for real, for real. I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a New Jersey head. Okay. But once I started watching New Jersey, the ones who I gravitated to the most was Jennifer, <laughs> Marge and Jackie. <laughs> okay. And I remember Jennifer getting Marge together at that reunion with the all white. <laughs> I think Jennifer, Jennifer won that reunion. And I was like, oh, that's my girl. And so I just fell in love with Jennifer. And then it was the next season when Marge said, I'm getting my lick back. And she let everybody know that Bill um, was the office horror. <laughs> okay. And um, Bill was taking out his penis and injecting it inside of uh, another woman. <laughs> And Jennifer just completely lost it and she could never find her footing. And Marge was swinging that girl every which way but loose. And I was like, Jennifer, get up, sister, get up. Marge is swinging you, sister. Now, mind you, Marge and Jennifer were my girls at the time. Like, I didn't want to see my girls fight. But I'm like, Jennifer, get up, Marge. It's girl, Marge got you by your pony, girl. Like, let her go, Marge. Let her go. Marge, let her go. Marge, let it go. Marge, let her ponytail go. Marge, Marge. That's how Marge had Jennifer's ponytail. And Jennifer just kind of like lost it and she spiraled. And <laughs> it was just like sad to watch in a way. And then like Jennifer slowly but surely kind of started to like not be my fave. And for the most part, Girl, I'm loyal to my girls. <laughs> Y'all know I'm loyal to my girls. But when I have to, you know, get off the train, I get off the train. You know, my girls, Kenya, um, Dr. Wendy, you know, um, I have a few girls. And I ride with my girls till the wheels fall off. But if I see that you actually kind of are a mess, then I have to release you to the community. And I feel like that's where I'm at with Jennifer. <laughs> like, Jennifer, girl, you a mess. And I feel like I might have to release you back to the community. Jennifer, you started the whole situation between you and Danielle. Even if we go back to last season, you trying to set Danielle up by having her Listen, Danielle is a grown woman. So if she wants to go back and repeat something that she heard, so be it. But Jennifer knew what it, knew exactly what she was doing by repeating that information to Danielle so Danielle could be messy and go back and repeat it even though it was old tea. Now, fast forward to this season, Danielle realizes, oh, you tried to use me last season. Jennifer is upset that Danielle called her out. Now you're in this lady's face talking about, I don't like this about you, this about you, this about you, this about you. And finally, when Danielle got to a point where she snapped and started cursing Dan I mean, cursing Jennifer out at the party, now all of a sudden it's, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. No, ain't no calming down. Girl, you... 
have I can't think of the word. Girl, I can't think of the word. You are antagonist. Girl, you have been antagonizing this girl. That's what I'm looking for. Antagonizing this girl. And now you finally have a reaction out of her. She's cursing you out. And now it's, oh, calm down, calm down, calm down. Right? Now it's now you're telling your family, um, she got all up in my face. Mm, that's where some of us going to have to disagree. Because the truth of the matter is... Teresa and Danielle were over there already speaking. Jennifer walked over and got right in the middle of Teresa and Danielle. It's not like Jennifer was standing right here, Danielle was standing right here, and Teresa was standing right here on opposite sides of the table. No, Jennifer came right in the middle of Teresa and Danielle. So when people start saying, oh, Danielle got in her face, they were already in each other's face from the time that Jennifer walked over there. Then Jennifer, all of a sudden, she remembers I pushed her. She hit me. <laughs> Jennifer, you put your hands on that lady. She was supposed to knock your ass upside the head. They teach us that, they teach us that in elementary school. Keep your hands to yourself. If you don't want nobody to pop you, keep your hands to yourself. You didn't keep your hands to yourself. That's why you got popped. <laughs> okay? Because you put your hands on that lady first, period. And you wanted to get a reaction out of that lady. And once she started cursing you out, now all of a sudden you want to calm her down. No, 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 no. What Teresa always say? What's Teresa's favorite line? When you poke the bear, you're poking the bear. And now the bear is raw. Now she's cursing you out. Now it's calm down, calm down, calm down. Girl, shut up. Anyways, um, girl, we just talking. Jennifer and Teresa, they meet up later to have a conversation about their friendship. This is a problem with Jennifer. Jennifer, you're the fool. Jennifer is, I guess, a ride or die for Teresa. No matter what, she's going to have Teresa's back. So now we have a situation where I guess it's time for Teresa to have Jennifer's back the way that she wants Jennifer to, um, I'm sorry, the way Jennifer wants Teresa to move in the friendship the way that she moves in the friendship. And because Teresa is not moving the way that Jennifer um, wants her to move or the way that she would move, now Jennifer has a problem with it. Girl, nobody told you to be a dummy and be a ride or die, girl like the diva caller, the village idiot. No shade. You know, no shade. But you know what I'm saying. That's your fault. So now you have Teresa, who's really not running to, 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 to Jennifer's, you know, aid to defend her, and Jennifer feels some type of way. Again, that's your fault. Just because you're friends with someone does not mean you have to be ride or die. Girl, if Girl, being friends with someone is not just being there for them, girl, even when they're wrong. Girl, it's about holding your friends accountable. And when they're wrong, you tell them that they're wrong. <laughs> okay? Now, we're going to get into that friendship stuff with a little, a little bit later with some other girls. Anyways, that's it about uh, Jennifer and Teresa, girl. Jennifer, you a fool. Um, Danielle and Rachel meet up. And uh, Danielle is basically telling her the story. I mean, they're going over the story um, and her father, talking about her father, sorry. Talking about her father and how moments like this, she wished she had her father to speak to, to talk to, because he would have understood. Uh, she got into an altercation like in high school or something and her father saw it and he was proud of her. I guess she was defending herself, I guess, I don't know. Um, it is what it is. Rachel is having a slumber party and she lets Danielle know that she's inviting uh, Jen. Uh, she's inviting Jen. Um, she's not inviting Teresa. I mean, while she while she inviting while she invite Teresa to her to her house, girl. On top of that, so no. I mean, it makes sense. I'm not inviting Teresa. I'm I'm inviting Jen. I'm cool with Jen. I'm not cool with Teresa. She ain't coming to my house. Okay, that makes sense. Um, Teresa and Gia are having a conversation. 
Can I say something? Teresa has this thing of, I guess, people trying to disturb their peace and, you know, pop their love bubble. Maybe if you would have gotten with someone who didn't come with so much baggage, then Teresa wouldn't have to worry about constantly having to defend her relationship or feel as though people are trying to come after her peace or attack their peace or, you know, attack their love bubble. Girl, from the get go, I have been yelling and screaming from the mountaintop that Louie is a fucking weirdo. <laughs> okay. And now we hear all of these things, whether they're true or not about Louie. Girl, maybe, 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 maybe your ass should have stayed by yourself. Or maybe, just maybe, once you realize that mm, you got a lot going on and I don't want to part to this girl, you should have left Louie where you found him. But no, that's the road you wanted to go down. Now you're over there stressed out, losing weight, can't eat, edge is falling out because this nigga who you done got with, girl, is stressing your ass out in and out of court with some crazy, supposedly crazy ex. The Lord says that, that Teresa can't hold down no food. She thin, she stressed out. She thinks she's going to pass out at the goddamn uh, podcast, down to the podcast um, because of basically the things that are going on with Louie. It's stressing her out. When you are dating and you start to hear these stories, these things about these men and women, girl, why do y'all continue to be in the relationship? Why not say, you know what? This is not the road I want to go down. I'm too old for this shit. <laughs> I'm not trying to be no ride or die at no 50 years old. Girl, we already got drama in this mess. And girl, we just started dating. It's only probably going to get worse from uh, worse from here. And that's exactly what's happened to Teresa, in my opinion. Girl, it was already red flags about that fucking weirdo from the get-go. You stayed with him, and now you're over there, girl, stressed out. Sorry. I don't feel sorry for Teresa. Teresa is an old, uh, uh, old ass, grown ass woman. Anyways, um, I don't really know what's going on between Louis and her ex, and his ex. I think I did read something. Did I read something? I don't know if I read something or not. Did I read something on the internet about? I think I did read something about. What's the court? Was the case thrown out? Was the Kate? Was the ex crazy? I don't know, girl. I don't know, girl. Don't give me, don't give me the lying. Anyways, um, now this is where I started looking at Gia, like she's slow, and Teresa, like she's slow. Mar Teresa, of course, is blaming this on Marge. <laughs> Marge supposedly was in contact with Louis' ex. Now, when she was in contact with Louis' ex, I don't know. Was it after? Teresa, they found out that y'all hired a PI. <laughs> and then Marge said, well, girl, since she going to go, since she hiring P PIs to find out information on this girl, I'm just gonna go straight to the, I'm just gonna go straight to the source, my damn self. Girl, can I say something? I know people don't like Marge, but I feel like there is a, I feel like it is a difference. It is a difference between Marge being the village gossip and wanting to know your tea versus literally hiring a PI. I'm sorry, it's not the same thing. Marge, you could just you could just chalk it up to her being a nosy ass bitch, right? Girl, Marge ain't out here hiring no PIs though. Girl. So even if Marge was going around town talking about girl, so what what do you know about Teresa? Girl, okay. What do you know about Jennifer? <laughs> right? Girl, that is not the same thing as hiring a private investigator. Anyways. Um this is where I was like, okay, Gia, you sound stupid. Sorry. You do. Gia sounds stupid. Gia feels like Jen Fessler, who I guess is a caller for how it is type of girl. Once Jen hears the story, I guess from the lawyer, because Teresa was going to have her lawyer get together with the girls and explain to them how Marge is a part of the problem. And once Jen Fessler hears this information, then maybe she'll be the one to just call it out for what it is. 
If I had a friend, if I were Marge and I found out that my friend had went to my enemy's home to have a conversation with her and a lawyer about me, I would be pissed. I don't know why they would think that it would be okay for Jen Fessler to come and listen to a lawyer speak about Marge, knowing that Marge and Jen are friends, were friends before Jen got on the show. How does that even make sense? How would you feel if you found out your friend was meeting up with your enemy so they could have a conversation with a lawyer about you? Because they feel once Jen hears the truth, then she'll just call it for what it is. Now, see, this is a part of the friendship where Jen needs to say, oh, sister, no. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It's one thing for me to try and defend Rachel. We're going to get into that in a little bit, too. When it comes to y'all talking about John says something, but you really want me to come over to your home or meet you at a restaurant, whatever and listen to your friend or your lawyer talk about Marge. Girl, what? Like, that don't even make sense, y'all. And it's weird that they think that that is okay. And if Jen did that, Marge needs to cuss the dog shit out of Jen, friend and all. Girl, what are you doing? <laughs> I hope Jen doesn't move like that. I don't think she would. Like, that's just another situation. That's like a whole nother level. That's like a whole nother level of, girl, I really can't trust you. I was with Jen. We just, we, Jen and we're going to get into Jen and Rachel. Girl, am I getting ahead of myself? Girl, we just going. Girl, we just talking. Girl. Jen and Rachel. Rachel, Jen was not wrong for, to me, she was. Like, Jen, Jen was in one of those positions where she was damned if she do, she damned if she don't. If Jen would have just sat there and let Teresa and Gia think that John had been just dragging Gia by her, by her braids, then girl, they would have been like, why did you stand up and say something? But Jen was really trying to like defuse the situation and say, no, 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 that's not what, that's not what happened. But Rachel wants to get mad at Jen. So Rachel's having the slumber party. Jen had already texted Rachel saying basically girl i'm trying to defend your man basically bitch why, why are you mad in a nutshell rachel didn't respond but then rachel sent out a, a text message inviting them to the slumber party jen responds and says bitch i ain't coming J rachel then responds to jen about the text message she sent her earlier about girl i was basically trying to defend your man and you Girl, Jen had every reason to be low-key pissed off. Girl, I'm not going to no goddamn slumber party. Girl, I was trying to defend you. I text you. I know you got my text. And now you want to text me back after I told you I'm not going to respond to a text message that I sent you before you said before you text me? Girl. <laughs> Girl. Rachel got some nerve. I would have been pissed off too. Girl, fuck you and fuck that party. Okay, and I hope somebody fall and break their leg walking up to that house and that ragged ass driveway you got. Girl, all I saw was dirt and sticks. Girl, I said, girl, Rachel, girl, somebody's gonna fall. Girl, somebody foot gonna slip into a pothole. Somebody gonna foot, foot gonna slip into some mud. And girl, it's gonna be a lawsuit for you. Girl. Anyways, um, Black Dolores, she was over at Jen's house. That's why she was having a conversation with Jen. Um, about Rachel and Jen. I'm with Dolores. She basically told Jen, girl, maybe, what did she say? Maybe like um, y'all are not meant to be friends. What? Did, how did she say? It? Maybe it's not meant for y'all to be close friends. I'm about to say something. I'm going to go, I'm listening. I have gotten into arguments with some of my friends. I have fallen out with some of my friends. We, of course, made up, right? I have not spoken to some of my friends because we were mad at each other. 
whether if it was for a month or two months or three months or a week or whatever, we eventually always come back around. But I have not gotten into an argument with my friends in a very long time. Ground too old. I, girl, I like low maintenance friendships. I saw somebody say that the other day online. I like low maintenance friendships. Girl, I'm not supposed to be arguing with nobody. I'm not about to be fussing with nobody. Girl, we get into an argument, it better be some real shit. It better be some shit like, girl, I see why we got into an argument. Not no petty shit we was arguing about in 2001, 2002. A lot of my, some of my friends um, I've known since like 2002, 2003, you know. So the point I'm trying to make is this. Jen Fessler and Rachel met on this show, <laughs> from what I understand. Girl, I am not at my big ass age, Jen Fessler. Even Rachel. Rachel might be in her 30s, right? Girl, I'm not about to be doing this tug and pull for this friendship with you who I just met a couple of years ago, girl. Maybe it's not meant for us to be this close of friends. Maybe it's meant for us to just be associates, maybe co-workers, <laughs> okay? Girl, what if I, what, maybe one day if I'm out shopping and I see you at Saks, and you're out shopping and you're at sex and we just happen to have a cocktail and we laugh and kiki and we spend the day together, that would be great too. But we don't have to force this friendship, right? We run into each other, have a good time. You never know what could happen. We could build off of that, right? But this stressing out, arguing, fussing, going back and forth over a bitch I just met a couple of years ago, girl, I'm not doing all of that. <laughs> yeah. Not at my big ass age. Girl, either we're going to be friends or either we're not. If we get into an argument, girl, it needs to be something legit. And if you cannot see that, girl, I was actually trying to protect your husband from being drugged by, girl, Gia and Teresa and probably, girl, low-key these fans, then, girl, you just don't see it and that's okay. <laughs> Maybe they're not meant to be close friends. I think we also have to come to a uh, come to you know, some common ground and say that sometimes in, in, in friendships or building friendships, you start to realize maybe this is not the person. That's how y'all need to approach these intimate relationships. The same way you don't want to be friends with everybody. Everybody ain't meant to be your boyfriend or girlfriend. Everybody's not meant to be your wife or your husband. Hey, Teresa. Hello. We do more vetting when it comes to our friendships than y'all do with these trifling ass niggas who y'all be laying down with. Well, I was about to go into a whole rant. Anyways, but yeah, like it's okay to say, it's okay to say, mm, I don't know if me and this person are going to be close, but maybe if I see them out at a party, maybe I'll still keep their telephone number in my phone. And if they text me and if I feel like, okay, girl, let me just go see, let's go have a cocktail. But I just don't like to be too stressed out. I don't like to be stressed out at all in friendships. Girl, friendships should be easy breezy at my big ass age. Girl, I can't, I, I, I can't, I can't do it. I'm not fussing with you, girl. I'm not arguing with you. Girl, I don't even know you quiet as this kept. Bitch, I just met you because we work together. <laughs> Anyways. Um... Dolores wants the girls to go out of town basically to have a kumbaya to try to get some things together. Let me tell y'all something about Dolores. Listen to this. Dolores may not, Dolores is not the fan favorite. We know that they say that Teresa is a fan favorite. That's her show. Blah, 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 right? If it wasn't Teresa, if it wasn't for Teresa, it wouldn't be a Red Housewives of New Jersey. All the stuff that the Teresa, the Teresa fans and stands say. However, Dolores really could be the matriarch of this group. Dolores really could be the HBIC of this group. And I'll tell you why. Even though Dolores is not necessarily the fan favorite, even though Dolores is not the Teresa Judice, Dolores is respected out of everybody in this group. There is not one person in this group that does not, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think there's one person in this group that does not like Dolores. And if they don't like Dolores, they know enough not to really go after Dolores, right? They don't, they don't really, they, they, some of the girls will tussle with Marge. 
they'll definitely tussle with Teresa. Marge, Dolores has a respect of the girls. That's what I be talking about when I said when I talk about Karen. Karen of, of Potomac. Karen is problematic as hell, but it does not take away from the fact that it does not matter what Karen do, do, does to those women. Is it does or do? It doesn't matter what Karen does to those women. Girl, they always still come back around to Karen because they have a love and respect for Karen, right? I wish that Dolores and Karen were more vocal, right? And really took on the role of being the peacemaker, the neutral girl. And sometimes you call it for what it is. A part in my head, a part of being the person who is supposed to be Switzerland, this is just in my head. It's also calling out stuff when it needs to be called out. The same way she called out Jennifer and told Jennifer, no, sister girl, you're not going to get up in our face. You're not going to get up in Teresa's face. Bitch, if you wanted to say something to Danielle, you should have said it. She was right here. You're a big girl. Handle your business. That's what I want to see. Girl, you call it out and then we're going to move on. We ain't got no beef, but you're not going to be yelling at us. Girl, you're a grown-ass woman. Girl, you let her walk by you and tell you that you look like shit. You should have responded. We don't have to stick up for you. No, that's not what we're doing. That's a one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> okay? So I wish that Dolores was a little bit more vocal um, and really became more concrete in the role that I want Dolores to play. Because I really think that she really could be the girl who kind of shapes the group together. It, it feels like she's trying right now because she probably caught wind that, girl, y'all all about to get y'all pink slip and white box, but girl, it's a little too late. Yeah, it's just a little too late. Girl, it's a little too late. Girl, all y'all probably about to get fired. Girl, it is what it is. Or they might just bring Teresa back and then, girl, just shake the show around her again. I don't know. Um, I don't care about New Jersey like that, girl. They could fire everybody, bring everybody back. I don't care. Um... Jackie, did y'all hear when um, Marge told Rachel that girl, she probably needed some bigger shoes for the girls who have hoods? <laughs> and girl, Jackie came in talking about she wore a size 10. And then Marge said, I told you the girls had hoods. <laughs> Marge is a kiki to me. Um, girl, that's it, girl. I feel like I've just been talking. Jackie's book that make the New York uh, New York uh, sellers best list. She said it's harder than what people say. I mean, girl, she said, but the book is still selling. Um, Rachel told oh Rachel and Jen Fessler go to the side and have a quick conversation at Rachel's home. Because Jen is stressed out and Rachel just said she wished that Jen would have just come and got her and told her about, okay, girl, I guess I can see that point too. Like, girl, instead of you responding, girl, just come and get me. But girl, it's kind of like, girl, if I say we, girl, let me tell you something, bitch. Girl, this is what I would have said. Bitch, let me tell you something. If, I, if you're my friend, on some real shit, if you're my friend and I see someone possibly dogging out you or your husband, girl, you should want me to stand up for you, bitch. Girl. You mad because I stood up for you? <laughs> and your husband? Really, I stood up for your husband. And you mad about it? <laughs> next time I'm gonna next time I'm gonna send that and whatever they whatever they calling him, what whether they calling him the biggest drug dealer in New Jersey, the biggest drug dealer in New York, whether they saying, girl, whatever they saying about him, I'm just gonna send out, cross my arms, and I'm not gonna say shit. The I do you want better. <laughs> so you ain't never got to worry about me defending your husband again. Because I don't give a damn what they say about him. Hello? Now, if Jen, now Jen would have had that energy, Rachel would have got pissed off and kicked out of her house. <sighs> Anyways, girl. Girl, that's it. All right, y'all. I'm done. I'll talk to y'all later. Y'all have a good night. Bye, y'all.